The following content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. It does not constitute means for diagnosis, healthcare advice, nor treatment. Make use of a qualified healthcare professional for such purposes. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Charlene Ortiz and today we're going to talk about the topic of correlations. In mental health and psychology and other related fields, we make use of statistical methods in order to provide an understanding and seeing which factors, if in fact they aren't, related to each other and perhaps that relationship and how that may impact the prediction of finding and being able to predict upon another variable. Because of that reason, today we are going to talk about correlation. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and start sharing our screen. Now, something immensely important about correlations is that if you take, if you don't take anything else from this video, I need you to remember that a correlation does not involve causation. Why is that important? I don't want you to think that because something is related, because there is a relationship between one factor and the other, I don't want you to think that because of that reason, they must cause each other. For example, think about how you are related to your cousins, to your uncle, to your siblings. But keep in mind, that relationship doesn't mean that because you are related to your siblings, it doesn't mean that you caused your siblings. Quite the contrary, just because there's a relationship there, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is a causation. So I do need you to keep that in mind whenever we are talking about these factors. Having said that, let's give you an example of something that is actually related to each other, but it's a clear example of how one variable does not cause the next variable. So notice here in your example, you have one of the variables, and in this case, one of the factors is US spending on science space, and technology. And notice that there is, in fact, a correlation. They are related. There's a relationship between U.S. spending on these fields and the suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. Notice that even though this sounds immensely bizarre, there is a correlation between the two. However, does that mean that because the U.S. spends on technology, does that mean that there is a method of suicide that is preferred or utilized but in, by individuals who have taken their own life? So this is a good example of how just because two factors are related to one another, it does not mean that they cause one another. And if you notice, very interestingly, if we go back to our slide, notice how close they are to each other. They're actually very closely related. Right, so notice that the amount of budget that the US has spending in the fields of science and technology, notice how closely related they are to one another, the amounts of deaths or suicide. So again, just because something is related, it does not involve causation. So let's go back to our slides. Now, what is the intent of a correlation? Why do we conduct correlations in the first place? Well, something important to remember is that generally the intent of a correlation, right? The intent of conducting a correlational, correlational, I should say, research design is to attempt to measure two variables. I want to find out if there is a relationship. So for instance, oftentimes you find yourself watching a documentary or reading something in the news or reading something on social media saying an individual who committed an awful crime, right? So for example, taking somebody's life and things of that nature. And often you will hear people say, well, this individual attacked his or, co or her coworkers because he was just fired, right? So notice that people are there drawing a conclusion, right? They're drawing that relationship between having a hostile work environment versus that person going back and attacking their workplace and the persons in the workplace. 
and notice that if we run these statistics, sure, there might be a correlation between the two. But was that factor, the fact that that individual perceived that they were in a hostile work environment, was that exactly what caused that attack? So in statistical research, we don't have to guess. We can find out if something is related to one another. And further along, when we start talking about experiments in other lectures, you'll see how we go about then explaining cause. So a correlation, keep in mind, it's only interested in that relationship. It's only interested in seeing if one variable can predict the other. So let's go back to our slides. Now, there are different types of relationships that we can have with one another, right? There's different types of relationships that these variables can carry with one another. So for instance, we talk about a direct correlation, a direct correlation, also known as a positive correlation, a positive correlation. What does that mean? What is a direct correlation? What is a positive correlation? I want you to keep in mind that every time you hear the term positive or negative, I don't want you to have the misconception that that means, well, it must be good, right? Because the term positive, we, what we're here, gen what we hear generally, I should say, is that, well, it must be good, right? It was positive. Notice that in this statistical procedure, positive does not mean that it was good, right? So that's something immensely important to remember. As well as when you hear the term negative, I don't want you to think that, oh, it must be that that relationship was something awful, right? That something negative had occurred. I need you to keep in mind that that is not the case. When I'm, I am referring to a positive relationship, when I am referring to a direct relationship, what I mean, if we go back to our slides, I mean that they are moving in the same direction. We're actually going to cover that a little bit more in detail. Likewise, we have an inverse relationship. And here we are referring to a negative correlation. I am referring to a negative correlation. And in this specific regard, what I am saying is that the relationship will go in opposite directions. And I'm actually going to show you many examples of both a positive and negative relationships so we can understand better what does that direction mean. Now, things can either be positively related to each other, negatively related to each other, and we also have a third option, and that is there is absolutely no relationship. So if we go back to our slides, Notice that the third relationship that we can possibly have, it's something that is not related to one another, that there is no evidence to show that there is indeed a relationship. Now, something really important, you might have heard about this topic before, but we will have our independent and dependent variables. They're usually referred to as X and Y respectively, but in the case of correlational research, we're going to refer to X as the predictor variable, right? Predictor variable. Now, for the purposes of correlations, correlations and those relationship, we're relationships, I should say, we're going to refer to that Y as the criterion variable, that variable that depends upon that prediction, okay? So again, X is the predictor variable, and y is the criterion variable, which depends upon the prediction that we may draw based on the x factor. All right. Now, when we were talking about direct positive relationships, I mentioned that a direct and positive relationship is that that goes in the same direction. Now, Let's see an illustration about that. So in keeping back with our slides, notice that that positive, that direct relationship means when a factor, right? When that variable goes in one direction, the second variable will go in the same direction. So in this case, notice how we have a relationship between height and weight or weight and height. So notice, we're going for the illustration of this example. This corner here represents zero. And let's suppose that this represents 50 pounds, 
And then this notch here will represent 100, 150, and so on and so forth. Right, and this will represent the amount in inches. So let's say 40 inches, 50, 60, and, and so on and so forth. Notice that the greater the weight, we can infer because it is a direct and positive relationship, meaning if one goes up, such as, as, such as weight, height will also go up. So notice that we are following a relationship, a positive relationship, where one variable went up, the second variable also went up, went in the same direction. But conversely, we can have a relationship, the positive relationship, in which if one variable goes down, the second variable will go down. Those values, that data point, that data set, that specific data set is going to go down. So when we are thinking about the variable that is going both down and down, that is still a positive relationship because they're going in the same direction. And I cannot stress that enough. Positive means that they are going in the same direction, whether both of them go up or both of them go down. Now, when we are thinking about a negative correlation, if you remember from earlier, I mentioned that a negative correlation is, a, is an inverse correlation, meaning that when one factor goes up, the other factor goes down right? So when one factor goes down, the other factor goes up. So for instance, let's look at this example of a negative correlation. So notice that in this, by the same token, we have the factor of being tired versus the factor of hours of sleep. So notice that the more tired that person felt the less hours of sleep that person had. So again, let's say this was, this individual feels more tired. So for example, a rating of 10, and this of course is a fictitious example. And then here we have an example of 10 hours of sleep. And this is a rating of one, meaning not feeling so tired. So from zero to 10, and here we have zero means I am absolutely not tired at all. And 10 will represent I am immensely tired, can keep my eyes um, open. So notice that the more hours of sleep, right? So here I have one hour of sleep, five hours of sleep. And here you can do the same inference. So for example, here I rated myself as a zero, not being tired at all. And here I am immensely tired. No, notice that the less tired I feel, the less tired I feel, the more hours of sleep I had. Whereas if I rate myself as super tired, notice that I barely got an hour of sleep, right? Barely got that hour of sleep. So notice that when one factor went up, so for example, hours of sleep, being tired went down. So that is what we refer to a negative statistic when we are switching, right? We're switching that direction from one factor to the other. So if one factor goes up, the other one goes down. And if one factor goes down, the other variable goes up. Now let's go back to our slides. Now, interestingly, we have a correlation coefficient, right? And a correlation coefficient is going to let me know how strong is this relationship, right? Because just because something is indeed related, right? It doesn't mean that that relationship is strong. For example, let's think about your relatives, right? You're closely related to your siblings, right? You're closely related to your siblings. But if we were to take that genetic makeup and see how closely related you are to your first cousin, to your second cousin. Sure, there is a relationship, but it is not as strong. This is what a correlation coefficient will tell me, 
correlation coefficient would tell me how much are you related? How strong is that relationship between a sibling and a sibling or a sibling and a cousin? And we can translate that to whichever variable. We can translate that to any factor, not just siblings or not just brothers and sisters. So if we go back to our slide, if we go back to our slide, remember that a correlation coefficient tells me about the strength, right? It tells me about the strength. How strong is that relationship with, with a linear relationship? So in the examples that we saw earlier, right? And I'm going to erase everything in our previous examples. So notice that this relationship with all your examples is pretty linear, right? We can almost see that perfect little line, right? That general line that is stemming from this relationship here. As you can see, there is somewhat of a line that we could draw that we can notice. And the same goes for this negative relationship. Notice that there is a general behavior, as I like to refer to it. There's a general behavior of these data points, right? So I want you to think that this is your own report. So you slept five hours, you slept, let's say three hours, and you feel a level of seven, right? And this is your neighbors, and this is your mom's rating, right? So notice that each individual point represents a specific data set. Now, I say that because I want you to observe the general behavior of these data points, which is there seems to be a line here. But when we are talking about correlation proficient, remember, we're only referring to linear relationships, like this example here and this example here. Notice that there is a general line between these two. There are other types of relationships. There are other forms of relationships that you can see. Now, there are, there are exponential relationships, so there's other forms of relationships, but in this example, we're only referring to those that we can see that general pattern, whether it be a positive or whether it be a positive relationship or whether it be a negative relationship. So our coefficient is going to tell me how strong that relationship is. So let's go back to our slides. Notice that here we are also not only referring to a relationship that's linear, we're also trying to look in the relationship between two variables, right? So for the sake of this exercise, we're only looking at two variables. So for example, like in our previous case, we have one variable of being tired, and then we have one variable of hours of sleep. And then we had our first variable for weight. And then we have our second variable for height. So notice that we're only observing our X and our Y. Generally, a correlation coefficient, a correlation coefficient is generally described as an R in italics, right? So it's generally presented in this fashion. Now, whenever you see the notation of a correlation coefficient, you're also generally going to find the degrees of freedom. And simply put, you're going to have your N. And what is your N? N is the amount of observations, the amount of participants, the amount of subjects. So for example, if we go back to our slide in our previous two examples. Notice that your N comes from, for example, how many data points we had here. So for example, we have one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. And say, for example, in, in this illustration here, we had 30 people, right? So this is you, this is your dad, this is your sibling, right? This is your neighbor, um, your coworker. So notice that each individual point, which is the N, the all of you, all of you together would be 30, right? Because it's each individual point. So that's what that N means, the amount of observations. 
Now, when we are thinking about how strong that relationship is, right? Just in keeping on our example, with our example, I should say, of, for instance, your siblings, how strongly related are you to your siblings? How strongly related are you to your cousins, right? There is a number, there is a number that we are aiming for to show whether or not that relationship is really strong or if it's not as strong or if there's no relationship at all. So what number is that? Well, remember, when we are talking about that correlational coefficient, if you go back to our slides, we are always going to have this range right here. We're trying to observe whether or not it is strong if it's close to negative one or if it's close to positive one. What does that mean? I'm trying to see, first of all, if there is a relationship. And once I find out if there is a relationship, I want to find out how strong it is, right? With my correlation coefficient. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to illustrate this a little better. So notice zero would represent no relationship whatsoever. It represents no relationship, right? So for example, you're not related to your neighbor, right? You're not related to me, your instructor, right? You're not related to the next person that you see driving next to you. So that would imply zero relationship. But notice that we have a range, right? And what is this range? We can go anywhere between positive one, or we can go anywhere up until negative one, right? What we would aim for, if we are looking at something that is strongly related to one another, they would be closer to that either positive one or negative one. So for instance, if you're closely related, or for example, in the aspect of, let's say, this would be a person who has no relationship. We don't have a relationship between depression and suicide ideation. But for instance, say that there is a relationship, and this is a completely mock example, okay? This is just for education purposes only, right? So say that that relationship, right, between, say, the severity of depression and suicide ideation, right? Say it falls in negative 86, or say, it falls in point 86. So notice that is a positive relationship, right? And if we go back to our slide, a positive relationship means that if one variable goes up, the next variable goes up, or if a variable goes down, the other variable will go down, right? So in, because it's positive here, right? We got a positive one, it means for example, the greater the symptoms, the more severe symptoms of depression, the more severe the chances of this person committing suicide, right? And again, this is a fictitious example. So notice as one variable went up, the variable of severity in depression, the other variable went up, which was the risk for suicide, right? So the number gives me the direction whether it is direct or inverse. And the symbol gives me the direction, I should say, and the number will give me the strength. The closer this number is to either positive one, or in this case, negative one, the stronger that relationship is going to be. The stronger that relationship is going to be when that number is closer to either negative one or positive one. So let's go back to our slides. Now, how is it that we calculate, right? How is it that we draw these conclusions? Well, we are utilizing Pearson's R. Pearson's R. And Pearson's R is a statistic to find that correlation coefficient, right? That R. Notice that it's only going to test for linear relationships, as I showed you earlier, right? It's only going to test for linear relationships, right? So it's going to be something like this form of relationship, right? So we see that general pattern of a linear 
relationship, just like we did in our next example, right? With our negative correlation. So notice that Pearson, right? Pearson statistics, Pearson, Pearson's R, right? That relationship is going to show me, right? Aspects of linear relationships. Now, how do we determine that strength, right? How do we determine that strength? How close are we to negative one or how close are we to positive one, right? We're going to find that correlation coefficient through Pearson. And generally, this is the general rule of thumb, right? What does that mean? So for example, if I have an R when I run my Pearson statistic, and it turns out that my result is 0.3 or around that range, I can say that that strength is low, right? Another thing would be, if I conduct my R and I come across a 0.5, I can start saying, okay, well, this relationship is, is pretty moderate, right? It's a moderate relationship. Now, if I have anywhere between seven and higher, right? 0.7 and higher, I can start saying, okay, this is a pretty high relationship. This is a pretty strong relationship. Now, again, we have direction. We either have direct or positive, right? If one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down, right? They go towards the same direction or the symbol negative is going to tell me if they are inverse. So for example, if one went up, the other one goes down or vice versa. If one goes down, the other one goes up. So Pearson is basically trying to tell me, is there a linear relationship? Are these factors related? Pearson is also trying to tell me, Pearson's R is also trying to tell me that correlational coefficient and say, how strong is indeed this relationship? How strong is it? And then we're going to see if it has a negative or positive symbol. If it has a positive symbol, they are going towards the same direction. That relationship is going towards the same direction. And if it has a negative symbol, it means that they are inverted. It means that if one goes up, the other one goes down. And it will, if the one variable goes down, then the second variable will go up. So let's go back to our slides. There is a very easy way to visualize this relationship, right? Because we have this statistic, right? We will have the symbol. We will have the symbol, which is going to tell me the direction. We're going to have the number. So the closer to negative one or positive one, the stronger the relationship. So it's telling me about that strength. And it's also going to tell me and understand the behavior of a linear relationship, right? So how close do those data points or those data sets fall and plot within that line, that general behavior. A good way to visualize these statistical data is by utilizing a scatter plot. And a scatter plot, very similar to that of, uh, for those of you who have played Battleship, for those of you who like geography or aspects of a map, it's very similar to that because we are going to display those coordinates, we're going to display where, where in that scatter plot, we are going to find that data set, right? So keep in mind that this is only usable if we have interval and ratio data, right? It's not going to work with other forms of data. And if you need a refresher, in regards to what interval and ratio data is, I'm going to leave, leave a video down below that discusses each of these scales much more in detail. Now let's go back to our slides. In this sample, we have X and we have Y. So we have my first and second variable and X has a value of 30 and Y as a value, I should say, of 20. So something I need to for you to remember is that that horizontal, right? That horizontal axis, just like in this sample here, right? That horizontal 
axis represents the x, the x variable, the predictor variable, whereas the vertical axis is going to represent the y, right? The one, the criterion variable. Something really funny that I like to uh, tell my students and it's super cheesy, but it really helps in remembering which one's which. Well, X is pretty simple. X marks the spot, so it's pretty simple. But then I like to think about Y as to why would you jump off a cliff, right? Why would you jump off a cliff? So now I can remember, okay, so the Y is that, that is vertical, right? Because why would you do this, right? So I remember the Y is the factor <laughs> related to jumping off a cliff, right? So why would you do that? So that's a good way to, or at least that I consider it's a good way to remember which axis is which, right? Which one is which. So now we know X is horizontal. And then Y, why would you jump off a bridge? Therefore, or jump off a cliff? Therefore, that's my vertical factor. So when we plot these in this grid, right? When we plot them here, you'll notice that my factor, my value of 30 fell here. And then my value of 20 for my Y fell here. So whenever we move from left to right along that axis, we're trying to find the target, right? We're trying to find that data set. So we move from left to right and then from down upward. And then we found our data set right here that intercept between 30 and 20, right? So we found that intercept between 30 and 20. These are some examples, right? So I'm going to illustrate some of the examples regarding whether or not we have a positive linear relationship, whether we have a negative linear relationship. And sometimes, like I mentioned earlier, we can have a relationship that is not linear, right? So we can have something that's exponential, for example. And then we can have a variable that simply does not have any relationship with one another. So let me show you what that would look like in a plot, right? So notice that a positive linear association, right? A positive linear relationship. Notice that in this regard, we have when one factor went up, the second factor also went up, right? They had the same direction. But notice that in a negative relationship, a negative linear relationship, right? Notice that one factor was high, when one factor was going up, the other factor was going down. Now, notice that we can see that general behavior, right? We're seeing this general behavior of a straight line in that linear relationship. But if you notice here, when something is not related to one another, when one variable is not related, notice that we don't see any patterns. There is just no, no data set here, no logic or logical behavior, right? There's simply no relationship here, right? However, we also have nonlinear relationships and associations. And notice that there is here a general behavior, right? I can see this exponential behavior, right? So notice that in a positive linear association or relationship, one factor went up and the other went up, went in the same direction. And here we have an example of where a negative association or relationship. So notice that when one factor went up, the other factor went down. And here we have there's simply no order. I don't see a general line. I don't see a general behavior, which tells me that there's probably no association. There is no relationship between these variables. But here in my nonlinear association, I can see a general pattern, right? It seems that at some point when one of the variables went up and the other variables went down, it only happened to a certain extent because I started receding but then once we hit another data set, it started going back up, right? So notice that the relationship was exponential, right? In this particular case. 
Now, this line that I've been referring to, right? The line that shows me whether there's a general behavior of going in the same direction, a general behavior of showing that it's going in the opposite direction, that line that's showing me there's simply no line whatsoever, that there is clearly not an association with all these factors here. We're talking about a regression line. We're talking about a regression line. Now, remember, when we are talking about that correlation, we're trying to see if things are related to one another, meaning that I'm trying to find that prediction, right? So for instance, if I say the more medication you take, the less symptoms are you going to experience, notice that that is a prediction, right? I'm trying to say, because I know the relationship between medication, one factor, and then the second medication, notice that I'm trying to do a prediction. Now, in order to do that prediction, I would like to have a regression, right? I, I would like to conduct a regression line, right? And why is that? Well, it's that line, first of all, let's start with the definition. A regression line is simply the line that better fits that scatter plot, right? So if we go back to our previous example, if I erase all of the marks, the markings here, Notice that my regression line will be a line that better predicts that, that relationship. What line better predicts that relationship? So for instance, if I were to, let's say, let me grab another color to make that illustration. Notice that if I were to draw a line, for example, a, dry, a line like this, Notice that my points are not falling near this blue line, right? So all my little individual data points fall closer, closer, I should say. And they're more aligned with this red line. However, this regression line that I drew here is not, is not adequate to provide the, this relationship, right? To try to predict how these dots are going to behave. By the same token, if we go to our negative relationship, that negative association, right? If I drew a line here, right? Notice that this line does not fit well, right? Because my points are falling closer to this red line, right? They're not falling close to this blue line that I just drew. Therefore, this line will be the better fit. And the same here, right? So for example, if I were to draw an exponential relationship here, Notice that this blue line also does not fit correctly, right? Sure, there's some points, right, that fell really close. For example, these here, for example, this point here, these points here are close to my blue line. And these points here are close to my blue line. And these points here are close to my blue line. But notice that it's not the best predictor, right? It's not showing me that that prediction pretty well. Now, because of that, because I can draw that line that I like to refer to as that general behavior, because it allows me to predict that behavior, we actually have an equation, right? We have an equation that allows me to calculate exactly where that line falls. So remember, x and y are going to be my coordinates, right? So if we were to read this equation for a regression line, notice that I have y, which is one coordinate, and then we have x as the second coordinate. So if we go back to our previous example, right? If we go to this example here, let's go ahead and erase all of this data and all these markings. Notice that my X in this case was 30 and my Y in this example was 20, right? As illustrated here, right? So I know my data points. I know the coordinates. I know exactly when that, where that target is going to fall under. So in keeping with my formula, my little equation for a regression line, Y, and x are simply my little 
data points, my little coordinates, in order to find that target, in order to find that data set. Now, we have this factor here, the M. And the M simply refers to the slope. It simply refers to the slope. So if we go back to this example, right? If we go back to this previous illustration, it's going to tell me whether or not this line is going to fall more towards here, if this line is going to fall more towards the middle, is it going to be more inclined and go this way? So that M, right? That M represents that inclination, right? That slope, just like the wood um, going up a hill or diving, driving down the road. It's going to tell me, okay, how inclined, how much of a slope are we talking about, right? So it would tell me where that general line will be inclined, right? Where exactly would that be? So that's what the M is. In the case of B, right, in the case of B, we're talking about that Y-intercept, right? We're talking about that Y-intercept. Where are we in regards, in regards to my, my data plots? For example, when am I intercepting, right? Just like you would in a game of Battleship. For example, if you've never played Battleship, I feel very sorry for you because it's a really fun game to play with people. But in the premise of the game is finding out coordinates in order to sink your opponent's ship. And the same goes for a scatter plot, right? I'm trying to identify that intercept between the two points so that I can identify my target. Hashtag battleship, am I right? I actually have it here at home. I have a lot of fun with it. But you're not here for battleship. You're here for a regression line. So if we erase these factors here, changes, right? Changes to the regression line would then be expressed by this new factor that we are looking into. So notice that if we had to make a change, now our equation looks a little bit more different because instead of having that equation line, y equals this, the, the data set for y equals the slope and the data set for x, plus that intercept, right? Plus that intercept. Notice that now changes to that regression line are going to look a little bit different because I'm not looking into the slope. Now I, uh, in the slope in this sense, right? I'm looking into, in the sense of M, I should say, now we're looking into another change, right? A factor that was not mentioned before. So again, here, we're going to have a little bit of a difference so notice that here we have the same. So we have the criterion variable, the predictor variable, but notice that instead of an M, now we have B, right? As a change to our equation. And instead of having B as the intercept, B has now become the slope. And now instead of having B as that inter Y intercept, now we have a factor of A. So I'm going to give you an example, right? Let's look at an example of that strength, right? Of that regression line and how it would look like, for example, if we were trying to draw a conclusion, right? If we're trying to draw that conclusion and say, okay, how closely, how exactly are these data sets, are these data points falling close to that line, right? So for example, are they very dispersed and not near that line? Or if I have this line, are they actually falling very, very closely? to that line that I calculated for that regression. So here are two examples, right? Here are two examples for that strength and that line and that regression line. So let's talk about first about the strength, right? So this could be whatever we want it to be. So for example, we can say that this data here represents, let's say, the amount of time couples spend, the amount of hours they spend a week hanging out with each other with some quality time with each other and the amount of satisfaction they feel with their marriage, right? So we can say this is satisfaction and this is uh, the amount of time they spend. So my X is the amount of time and then I have my Y as marriage satisfaction, 
So again, these are hypotheticals. I want you to think that um, you're going to go back to your partner and say, well, Dr. Shar said that if we spend more time together, we're going to have more satisfaction with our marriage, right? So I don't want you to think I'm saying that this is only for the sake of this illustration, okay? So let's go back. So in my scatter plot, we go back to our slides. We had the value of X, which is time spent a week in, in regards to good activity, some quality time with your partner and satisfaction, right? Marriage or, or, or partner satisfaction. So notice in my regression line, right? Notice, first of all, it's a positive relationship, right? Because as one went up, right? The rate, the amount of hours you spend a week. So two hours, four hours, six hours. And notice that the rating in our fictitious scale, right? We gave them a scale and they rated their satisfaction between zero and two. So zero, meaning I am not satisfied at all with my relationship and two and above would be, I am pretty satisfied with my relationship. So if you notice, first of all, it's a positive relationship, right? Because when one factor went up, then the second factor went up, right? So my predictor and my criterion, notice that they are positive related. Now let's look at this regression line. Something really neat to remember is the stronger, right? Something's related. So remember, the closer they are to negative one or the closer they are to positive one, I need you to remember that in this specific case, right? In this specific case, the closer, the stronger that relationship is, the closer these little data sets, right? These little data points are going to fall closer to my little regression line, okay? So the stronger, right? I want you to think about that this one, this one line here represents that perfect relationship, right? Whether it be negative or positive, that one, that line here represents that positive, that either negative perfect relationship or that positive, that perfect positive relationship. So again, in our example, the more time they spend a week, they report the greater, right? Greater marriage or couples satisfaction. Now notice how close together these points are, how close they are to this line, right? So we can assume that the strength is pretty close, right? So it's pretty close to one. So it's probably, we're going to say it's a 0.7, right? So notice that when we have that strength, that R, that correlation coefficient of seven, notice that this is pretty close. That it's a pretty strong relationship. And if we go back to our correlation coefficient, you'll see it here, All right? So a correlation coefficient tells me how strong something is, right? It tells me the strength of the relationship. So notice that in a really strong, in a strong relationship, expect those plots to fall very, very close, right? They're super close to this line, right? Now, let's look at another example, right? So we can make this to be whatever it is that we want it to be. So let's go ahead and erase all this. And let's look into this example. Well, the first thing that I can see, right, it's a positive relationship, right? And just by looking at it, we can see that as one factor went up, the second factor went up, right? So notice that here, this could be, let's say the amount of time, right? The amount of time you spent, the amount of days you spent studying for a test, and this is your score, right? So this is going to be your score. And again, this is a hypothetical, right? This is a hypothetical example. So we have the time that we spent for an exam in our X axis, right? And then we have the score, right? The test score, it's going to be a Y axis. So notice when compared, right, to our previous one, you can see that general behavior, right? We can see that it is indeed falling close to this line, but these unit, units are not as tight, are they? They are not as close to that line, that blue line in the middle as our example up here, example A, right? So it's not as close. So that tells me that the strength is not necessarily 
that strong, right? Because they're not as close. There seems to be a relationship, right? Because we can see it. We can see that they are, there is a general behavior, right? There is a general behavior that the more time you study, the higher the score. And again, this is a fictitious example. So notice that in this case here, the dots, the data sets, the data points, the target points, notice that sure, they are related, but they're not as tight. They're not as close. So what we're trying to do is find out this distance, right? How far is this data set from the line? How far is this data set, data set from the line, I should say? And conversely, how far is this point to the line? How far is this point to the line? Whereas here, the distance is much less, right? The distance is pretty close. Whereas here, notice how I have data sets that are pretty far away from my line. So you would say, yes, there is a positive relationship, but this one seems like a little bit more moderate, right? And we can actually draw these statistics. So for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to say that they are moderately related. So I'm going to give it a rating of five and that would put me in a moderate relationship, right there. It's moderately strong, that relationship that they have with one another. Now, something immensely important to see is not only are we concerned, right? Not only are we concerned with the strength of that relationship, right? And the direction, right? So the symbol tells me the direction, whether they both go up, whether they both go down, or if they go in opposite directions, right? So that will be a negative relationship. But something that I need you to remember is that we also want to say how much of that difference, right? That variability, right? How much can be explained by one factor, right? And its criteria, right? Its prediction, its variability towards the second criteria, right? And how do we find that out? Well, if we go back to our slides, you will see that we also have coefficient of determination, coefficient of determination. So in keeping with our value of R, if you remember in the previous example, we had used Pearson's R. Notice that the only thing that we're going to do is grab that statistic and we're going to square that statistic, right? So for example, here, I wanted to say for the sake of our exercise, I'm going to say that here we have a pretty high, pretty strong relationship. And for our second one, I said, okay, it's moderate. It's a moderate relationship. So if we put it in our little, whether it's strong or weak, right? I have positive one and I have negative one. So notice that if we want a strong relationship, it's going to be closer, right, to the one, right? So notice that my previous illustration from example A is closer to one, therefore I can say, okay, it is stronger than my previous relationship with example B. So the only thing I want to do is grab this number, and I'm going to square that number. And what, does that, what is that going to tell me? What that's going to tell me is the coefficient of determination. It's going to tell me how much of that variance can be accounted for, right? How much of that variability of Y can be accounted for by X, all right? What does that mean in the Queen's English, right? What, what does that mean? I want to say, for example, in our example A, this was satisfaction with your relationship. This was the amount of time that you spend with having a good time with your spouse, quality time with your spouse or, or boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever the, the label you choose to use. So notice that we saw that relationship. Not only that, that relationship is pretty strong, right? But it appears to be strong, right? It appears to be strong because I don't know how much of my time spent with that partner in quality time, I don't know how much exactly did that time contribute to my satisfaction, which is why we are going to square that number. I want to see exactly how much did my X impact 
I should say, help in that variance of y. So if I were to square that seven, right? We're going to say, we're going to come up with the result of 49. What does that mean? It means that my x, right? So in this example here, notice that this much of y, right? This much of y, right? So for example, time spent with my spouse. This is how much x out of y, right? This is how much of x there is in y. This is how much influence or variance, I should say, apply to satisfaction, right? So spousal satisfaction. So notice if I were to use a different color to assist in that illustration, right? So let's find another pen color. So let's use red. So notice that this much, this section here, about 49%, of why can be explained because of X, right? I can't account for that variance, right? I can't account for how much that satisfaction varied because of the time that I spent with my spouse. Conversely, we can have in another example, we can have shared variance. So for instance, in our second example, right, how much of X, right, how much of X, there is that, that variance with Y. So notice that it's much less, isn't it? When we compare this little red spot here compared to our previous example, right? So notice in the first example, X accounted for about 49% of that variability. Notice in this case here, right? The variability was much less, right? So notice that there was, sure, there was a relationship, but it was small, right? The, the amount of variability was actually small, whereas in this case, the amount of variability, because it was a higher number, it was a higher R squared, notice that in this case, sure, there was less in this case, but there was more on this case that could be accounted for because of that X factor. Now, very, very importantly, as I mentioned earlier, time spent with your spouse does not cause satisfaction, right? Does not cause satisfaction, just like time and hours spent studying does not necessarily cause your score, right? And why is that? It's because we're doing a correlation, right? A correlation can only explain how much of how much of that relationship we have there are multiple reasons why we cannot say that if something is related we can't say that one caused the other i can't say that because you spend more time with your spouse as that fictitious example that i gave you i can't say well that time is what caused that statistic that we found, right? That 49% of, of variance and say, yes, this is going to contribute about 49% and therefore it must be causing that satisfaction. Well, that will be erroneous. If, if nothing else, that would be, um, in the best case scenario, it would be a mistake to say that. In the worst case scenario, that could be malicious to say that. So keep in mind that when I am saying aspects of, of relationships, I don't imply causation. And why is that? many reasons why we cannot say that a relationship is indeed a cause. So let's look over the, the issues that we can have with correlations, right? The first and foremost is, first of all, there could be a factor that occurred before, that occurred before we even started our, our statistic in finding out if something is related. There could be something before that we do not know about, that indeed has caused, for instance, that satisfaction, right? Now, we can also have a third factor. So that's another reason why we can't say that a relationship is causal, right? First of all, because something could have happened before, because 
There could be a third factor, right? There could be a third factor. So for example, we have, in my previous case, we had time spent in quality, time with your spouse or partner and your satisfaction, but there could have been a third factor, right? There could have been a third factor that had nothing to do with time spent with your spouse. So for example, the relationship you guys have with your children, right? So that would have been my third factor that in my relationship, in this positive relationship between time and satisfaction with your spouse, it was a third factor that I did not account for. So for instance, maybe the, the amount of time or satisfaction that you have with your children, that is what led to that spousal or that partner satisfaction. So notice that the second issue is, well, there might be a third factor that was responsible for that relationship that I have no idea where it came from. And unfortunately, we can also have a coincidence, right? Things can be related to one another and there is no real explanation. So in keeping with a very perverse example that I illustrated here today, notice that in this case, right? In this case, we have a relationship. We have a relationship between the spending of the United States when it comes to science and the suicides of its people. So notice that in this specific regard, we just so happen to have a relationship and we don't have an explanation as to why these two factors are related. So for instance, the amount of money that the US government spends in science and technology and the amount of suicide. So sometimes it could be simply because there is that coincidence. There is a relationship between these two factors without us even knowing why exactly this relationship exists. So again, three main factors as to why we can ascertain we are looking into relationships. We cannot ascertain if it was causal because there could be something that occurred before our study that led to that relationship. There could be that third factor that was responsible or simply it was a spurious correlation, meaning there's no explanation. It was simply a coincidence. Now, for some of you, right, for some of you, we will have to report our data set and the recommendation as to how we report that data set is we're going to have the value of R. So we will have Pearson, right? And we would have later, we will open parentheses, degrees of freedom. And again, degrees of freedom, it's simply that number of pairs minus two, okay? Now, you would also include the p-value, right? And generally, the p-value in social sciences is 0 0.05, although sometimes we do see 0 0.001. So we do see other factors, but generally these will be calculated beforehand whenever you are either conducting your own. And that may be something a little long further away, further away, I should say, but keep in mind, this is just an overview so that you know, whenever you come across a presentation of a relationship, you're like, oh, I know what that means. So I know that this is the significance, whether or not that significant, that relationship mattered, right? And then here we have that Pearson, that strength, and the, the degrees of freedom. Now, in regards to significance, right? Why do I mean, what is significance when we are talking about correlations, right? So think about, we found out, yes, there is a relationship, there's a negative relationship, and our score was 0. 0.37. Okay, good enough. But notice that even if something is related and we have to identify the relationship between the two variables, we find out how strong that relationship is. It doesn't necessarily mean there is, that is significant, right? Just because something is indeed related and we found that there is that strength between the two factors, notice that it may or may not be significant. There are many instances that we can come across a statistic and yes, there was a relationship, but it wasn't significant enough, right? So for example, a good example that I like using is when we boil water, right? When we are boiling water. So clearly there is a relationship between me 
turning the heat on the stove, how much I turn the little, the, the, uh, the stove and the amount of heat, right? How hot that pot is. Clearly there is a positive relationship. The more, the higher that number, the more the temperature on that water. Okay, so we found it's a positive relationship. And we also found out that not only is it positive, let's say there is a, a moderate or strong relationship between that, but is it significant? Well, it might be that I only turned it just enough and you're still able to even put your hand in the water and it won't burn, right? So was that significant enough to where there was that dramatic of a change, right? And chances are, the only way to do that is by calculating our p-value, right? Because I can keep doing the same thing and notice that it may or may not be significant, right? Because I could still be able to put my hand in the water. And I'm not saying go ahead and put your hand in the water, okay? I'm not saying that, I'm not condoning that, so don't do that, kids, okay? I'm saying that that would be a good representation. We found a positive relationship, we found a strong relationship, but is it really significant, right? Is it really going to contribute to having, to having that change? All right, let's go back to our slides. Now here is a, here's an example. Here's an example of salary, right? Here's an example of salary and all the other factors that could be contributing into your, the amount of salary you have. So in keeping with this, we're going to look into, okay, here is your factor of salary, right? And your salary, so I'm going to use a, another color to illustrate the rest of them. So let's use red. So we're trying to determine if there is a relationship between salary and the ratings that you receive from your coworkers, right? Like your yearly evaluations. If there's a relationship between salary and the length of time, how long have you been working for this company? And if there's a relationship between your salary and how many days that you miss from work, right? So notice that in this regard, looking into that comparison, right? So notice that whenever we have a value that's less than 0 0.05, we, or we should say later with significance, and we will see that a little bit later along, further along. Notice that it seems with my R, if you remember, earlier, R for my Pearson, 0.3, that was a mild, right? A very low relationship. And then with a five, we had a moderate. And then with our value of 0.7, now we start saying, okay, it's pretty strong. So notice that it seems between salary, and here we see that intercept again, right? We see that intercept between salary and rating right here, salary and rating right here. Notice that that R value is 0.78, which is telling me is pretty strong. Not only that, it's also telling me that it is significant, right? It's telling me that P value, right? That P value here is less than point. Zero, zero, 0.001. So not only is it strong, is it, it's also significant, right? But notice here, the length of time that you were in that job, right? So let me clear all this for, for us. So let's see the relationship between salary, right? And the amount of time that you've been working. So again, notice that anything less than 0 0.03 was going to be considered low for that R. And not only that, we're seeing that it's not significant, right? Because it's not less, our p-value is not less than 0 0.05. So for instance, maybe if we were looking in, in, in more realistic terms, right? And giving you a, an example, we can have someone who's a CEO of a company, right? And he just got hired and he's literally been, been working there for a week and he's making $200,000 a year. Whereas the employee who's been there, let's say 25 years, they're still 
making less than that amount. So notice that there wasn't a relationship. There wasn't a relationship between the amount of time that that person was in employed and their salary, right? Because the other employee perhaps still has a much lower salary when compared to the brand new CEO. And that person just made $200,000 in the first week. So notice that in this big company, the length of time, the CEO has only been working there for a week, but the other employee has been working there 25 years. Notice that there was no relationship, right? There was no relationship. And also it was not significant in regards to the length of employment and the amount of salary that you are receiving. Now let's go to our, our next example. So in our next example, we have the amount of days that you missed at work, right? And your salary. Well, if we look at that intercept, we notice that we have a what? We have a negative relationship, meaning that they go in opposite directions. So if one goes up, the second variable is going to go down. So in interpreting this, we see that the more days you missed, the less salary you're going to have, right? To the extent of 0 0.98, 0 0.98. So if you remember, R for low would have been a 0.3, and R of 0.5 is moderate, and an R 0.7 is pretty high. So notice that in this regard it is pretty high, right? We got 0.98. So it's a very, very, very strong relationship. I have a very strong relationship. Not only that, if we look down here, this p value is way less, right? That are 0 0.05. So not only is it super strong, because it's way higher than that 0.7 for Pearson, for uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient. But not only that, it's super strong, right? Because generally we accept values that are less than 0.05 as significant. And notice that here we have a value of less than 0.001. Now, again, if we are looking into a, an aspect of whether it, we have a positive or negative or no relationship whatsoever, notice that there was a positive relationship, right? Between your salary, right? Between your salary and your ratings, right? There was a positive relationship, right? Of, because it's a positive symbol, and it was moderate. It was a moderate relationship, right? 0 0.7, 0 0.78. So we have a moderate relationship. So that was positive and it was moderate. However, when we did our assessment, right? We're going to square that value, right? We're going to square that value and find out that my ratings contributed to my salary about 61.5%. Right, so the ratings that I received from my coworkers and my boss about my job performance impacted that salary about 61%. Now, we also found out no correlation. So if you remember earlier, we found out that there was no relationship. If I delete the rest of the markings, notice there was no relationship, right? Remember, it's less than 0.3, right? So there was no relationship between the amount of time that you work, the work at that company, and your salary. Just like I explained with the CEO that just started working, making $200,000 a week versus the employee who's been working there 25 years, but he still receives minimum wage. So there was no relationship. Right. There was no relationship. And not only that, it was not significant. Right. And the p value wasn't less than 0 0.05. Now, we did find a significant negative correlation. And what was that? It was your salary in regards 
to the days that you missed. So there was a negative relationship and we found it here, right? Your salary depended upon, or I should say, not depended, I should say related. It was related to the amount of days that you missed. Because the more, day this, more days that you missed, I should say, the more days that you missed, the lower your salary was going to be. So notice that we found a negative relationship between the days that you missed and your salary. And not only that, right? It was super significant, right? Because the value was way less than 0 0.05. And when we square that, notice the, the, amount, the amount of days that you missed and your salary, right? Accounted for 96.4%, right? Of your salary, All right? So whenever we decided to square that value, we decided to square our R, notice, that the missing of days accounted for 96.4. And in the same example here, your ratings accounted for about 61%, 61.5. Now, again, we have the, we're not, we're going to find how well does this fit, right? How well is this going to fit in regards to my line, right? Because if you remember, we had a positive, right? We had a positive relationship. So that means that the higher the scores, right? Higher the scores in your ratings from your boss and your coworkers, the more chances, 61, if I'm not mistaken, 61.5, the higher the chances of having that better salary. So if you wanted to illustrate this type of example, and we're trying to calculate that linear regression, right? We're trying to predict that line, see how well those data set, that data set is going to fit in my scatter plot. You would have, first of all, you would have our equation, and I'm going to draw it back. So we have our Y rating. And remember, we're going to replace that with our slope. And our slope in this case is going to be our rating. So we're going to have a value of 0 0.603. And then we are going to have our X plus that intercept, right? And the intercept of our salary that estimate was 21, 21, 24, which means that if I were going to plot my X, right, and my Y, it would mean that per every, this would symbolize someone who had the lowest score possible, right? So it was zero, right? Remember that this is going to be the ratings and this is your salary, right? And this represents someone who just had the worst scores ever. So if you had the worst scores ever, you would still make this amount of money, right? But notice that every time, right, we move along this line because it is a positive relationship, every time we would move, right? So this is a person who just never received those good ratings versus someone who received good ratings, every good rating that this person receives, right, will bump that person up about $21.24, right? So we would see that relationship between the score, that point, the rating score of a 0 0.603. And we would see that the person's salary would increase about 21.24. Now, in the same, these are other examples, right? So for instance, we had, this is what it will look like, right? So for example, my little line here, this is a much cleaner and better version than the one I drew. So notice that here, when it comes to our ratings, the higher the rating, the higher that salary is going to be. Now, we have a very similar situation, right? So we talked about, in this case, remember that there was no relationship, right? No relationship 
between the length of time and that salary, right? That salary that you were expecting, right? Because the p-value was not less than 0 0.05. And notice that your R for Pearson, you know, the less we were expecting, you know, uh, in as a general rule of thumb was 0 0.03. And we got a 0 0.0551, right? So it's pretty, not only is it not even a very weak relationship, it's also not significant. So notice that here with our salary and our ratings, we have a positive relationship. When one went up, the other one went up. But here with our salary, we saw no relationship. So instead of having a general line, we just have these data points all over the place, right? There is no general line, right? As we would observe on this one, right? Because there's no relationship. So notice how all these data points are all scattered, right? They're all scattered in our plot. And again, if I were to calculate, right, our linear regression, right, with the same equation that I just showed earlier, notice that we found that there is a pretty strong, right, pretty strong relationship there, greater than 0.7, right? So it's telling me that there is a pretty strong relationship. And not only that, it's negative, right? So the more days that I miss, the less salary I am expected to make. And that strong relationship is also immensely significant because we found it at a value of much less at 0 0.05, as we usually expect it. So notice that we have a 0 0.001. So again, it's super close to one, isn't it? Because we have that 0 0.98, 0 0.2. And remember, anything, the closer it is, whether it's positive or negative, is going to be closer to that line, right? Because it's almost a perfect relationship. So 0 0.98 puts me right about here, right? It puts me really, really, really close, right? So 0 0.98 would put me really, really close to that perfect relationship. And once we plot it, notice how close all of these lines, all of these data points, I should say, notice how close they actually are to that specific linear regression, right? They're super close, right? super close because my R value was super close to one of my extremes. And for whichever sample in the future, remember in the negative or the positive side, it's pretty close to that value of one. Now we can also have, right? We can also put all these values together because we may be trying to find the best fit. We're trying to see which model, what would what would actually predict all of those variables? Because keep in mind, especially in behavioral sciences, not one factor is going to help with the prediction, right? So there's usually, very, very rarely, we're not going to find that one factor predicted everything else, right? Generally, because behavior is so complex, generally, we need a wide variety of factors that came together and allowed for that prediction that allowed also for that variability that we find in our criterion variable. So generally behavior is much more complex. And I'll give you an example. Sometimes when we hear in the news or, or sometimes you might've read on social media, sometimes we hear about someone who say, for example, is a serial killer or someone who committed a horrible crime. And people like to say, oh, he committed this horrible crime because he had this happened in his childhood. That is immensely simplistic, right? Because we're using one variable to predict a second variable, right? Which was whatever happened in, in his or her childhood. And then we're looking at it in, in the sense of predicting, right? The, the actions that this person engaged in. So if we go back to our slides, you'll notice that in this particular case, we're trying to make use, 
of different variables, right? In order to create this model that would allow me to predict my salary. So now we're not only focused on just the one variable, we're looking at all variables as they contribute to my salary. And notice that when we are talking about just one variable, we're talking about univariate statistics, but sometimes we do need, and generally it is the case that we need to predict between multiple, right? We need multiple variables in order to conduct this prediction. So I hope that this lecture allowed you to see the influence and the characteristics of one variable with the other. What is a correlation? How do we understand the direction of a correlation? How strong is a correlation? And some of the examples that I gave, hopefully this assists you in clarifying how is it that I can understand a correlation, whether it be because you're looking into research and reading research data from literature, or because you're interested in conducting research in the future. Now, again, this is a very basic explanation of correlations, but hopefully this was insightful for you. Thank you very much for your attention.